just a good old boy. Hey y'all. Um, today's gonna be a little bit of a different video. Um, we're working on sprayer control valve solenoids. Um, and the valve itself, not really the solenoid. Um, so my valves on my sprayer has been sticking and they haven't been functioning or cutting on and off fully like they should. So I'm having to redo these, the two of the valves. One of them was good. Um, I cracked the housing. I think I mentioned it in one of the other videos on this one. I've already rebuilt it. And so that way I know exactly how it went together when I made this to show y'all. This is the old housing. I think this thing was twelve dollars. You can buy the new a whole new housing for twelve bucks. Um these kits we have a I've got a rebuild kit. This is a T Jet 1444 uh A selective control solenoid control valve i think is what it's called uh, dr oh directo valve um it's a directo valve solenoid control valve shutoffs for see, section control on the sprayers um basically what it is is a solenoid with a valve in there that opens and shuts to cut the water on and off for each section um there's three of these on the sprayer you have your left middle and right like a normal standard uh, control valve um each of these are individual each of them has their own switch and then they're connected to a master switch that kills the power over all of them um i've already rebuilt this one and put the new body in it so we're going to get started on this one and i'm going to show you all exactly how these work um before we start to see if I can get this in the camera sh whoops, in the shot here so y'all can see but you see that right there that valve that kind of brownish looking piece we well, see it touches right there something black that's the housing when that pushes up against that that seals any water from coming out of this hole now if you look through here you can see you can see clean through so this is your feed the feed coming from the pump goes straight through this and then it if when this opens it will open that valve will open and allow that water to come through here through the pressurized line so that's how this thing works um and it's just a simple standard solenoid that's magnetic all a solenoid valve generally is is just a electromagnetic uh, magnet on one end and then i'll show you what the actual other piece looks like this it's actually what i was having trouble with um the solenoid the magnet worked but the the uh, valve cylinder that's in there was rusted um due to condensation and everything and it was not allowing it to travel like it should but I'll show you all that here just a second let's get all this laid out here make sure y'all can still see it yep y'all are still good all right so let's pull this part out first so there's that part now we're gonna take this out normally you would use a screwdriver but I have taken this apart um, I hadn't rebuilt it but I did take it apart and I'll show y'all what I did here in just a second. And I didn't have this kit yet to rebuild it. So here's one of the seals. So we're going to go ahead and put that. I'm going to lay it out just like I would a transmission or something. So that way I know exactly how it goes back together. So this is the next piece right there. I'm going to move this out of the way. Alright. Now we're going to pull this up. Alright. So this is your solenoid now in here as you can see let me see if y'all can see that it's just a hollow tube at the end of that right down in there there's a magnet that's that's your actual solenoid um or electromagnetic or magnet um and then it pulls the it, this is what it magnetizes and this slides up in that 
sleeve and it pulls up and down like this and seals that valve in there so that's how that works there's not really any moving parts to it it's simply a magnet and a rod and that's it um now on in the inside here pull this apart pull this on apart this is your valve your body there's nothing else in here that's it now in here is that piece that sealed up again it right there's at the end of my finger you'll see a lip that's what that seal seals against so we're gonna lay this off to the side now here's the actual valve itself this is what pushes up against that housing to seal it um, and then it has these other seals that's on the ends um, like this one it screws on here on the housing and lays flat all right, so now that you've got this done, um, you unscrew this. So you're going to want to take something and hold this down. I wouldn't use something, maybe wrap it in a cloth and then use vice grips, but I wouldn't want to really clamp down on this with vice grips because you don't really want to scar this unless you have to. Um, or, well, you don't want to scar it, period. All right, so this, is, this piece is going to come off, and then there's a little ring in here. That holds your seal in place which is this seal and that one so we're gonna pull that out all right and here's the collar all right so this is the the actual cylinder piece that slides in and out of the solenoid right here like this just like that so when it when it magnetizes it pulls it up and when it's not it has a spring that sits right over this between here right here and that clip and it actually pushes it out so and that opens um, that closes the valve and then it magnetizes to open it back up so that's it it's just that simple um, so this is the piece that actually had rust on it that I had to clean up um, it had so much it had enough buildup on it that it was not allowing it to slide like it needed to inside of that sleeve and it was hanging is what was going on um while i'm doing this it needed new seals to go in it so i'm gonna go ahead and reseal it um and get it back together all right um so now what we've got to do is i'm gonna put this back in here like that all right so here's the actual part that's got all the seals in it so this one here is going to be that let's see let me get this one out this is the actual seal that shuts it off it's almost like a a small garden hose seal is almost what it looks like a rubber over washer so we're going to open up our kit our kit's going to come with two new seals, a spring, a new spring, and a new washer just like the one I put out, pulled out. So we're gonna pop that in. All right. Then we're gonna slide this back together like that. Then I believe that goes like that. Is that right? Nope, goes the other way. Nope, I know it don't go that way. It goes like that. All right. Now this is going to go on here like this. And we've already replaced our rubber. Oh, put this back over here. I just feel like this is backwards. Supposed to be like that. And I would be wrong. <laughs> right. So that's going to sit there like that. And then you put the washer in. And then you're going to put the little holder in there. And then 
this is going to screw down like this, that, and then, let's see, that one's going to go with that. There's that. So now we got to tighten this. So what I'm doing to tighten this, I'm just taking this cloth, putting it over. Oh, where'd that go? Oh, oh, I had them set to take that thing out. Tighten these back up. So you're going to just take a cloth and hold it so that way it doesn't take a thumb right so it don't scar it. Then you take a thumb wrench, tighten it down. Not too tight, you don't want to strip it. Alright, now that's tight. So now we need the body. And we are going to put this back in here just like this. got that in there now on this end I'm gonna take that washer off or rubber o-ring or seal off now we're gonna take this piece screw it back in the other end there's my screwdriver Flip it around. That's like hand tighten it down. That's all it needs to be. See, it's got the seal in there. And this is all put back like it's supposed to be. Now, spring goes there. I am going ahead while I'm doing this. I'm squirting a little bit of. Just a little bit of WD-40 Specialist Spray and Stay Gel Lubricant No Drip Formula. This is what I put on the chains on my round roller. Um, I really like this stuff. It turns into a gel and it won't come off. And it's it's rust resistant. Let's see. Lubricates 12 times longer. Prevents rust up to one year. So that's what I'm after. I don't want any rust. Just put a little dab on it to help it a little bit, not too much. So we're going to put the new spring on. Now here's the solenoid. Let's see. The points go to the opposite end of the nipple end. So we're going to put that down there like that. And now i got to drop. Get this thing to drop in there. Drop the cover back on this end. And crap. Flip my screwdriver back around. Whoop. Tighten this thing down. It's not hard, pretty easy. There's not a lot to these things either. They're pretty simple. <clears throat> um, now, the dollar value of this is the whole valve, one valve is like 80 something dollars, I think. Right at 90, just say 90. Time you add tax, you're gonna be looking at 90, 95 anyway. Um, and you're looking at 90 bucks for one of these. The kit was I don't have the bill in here. 
the kit these things here i think were like 25 bucks a piece to rebuild kits um i got a new body too one of these so this one was cracked um for 12 bucks so i bought two kits i think it was wound up and the kits were like the whole thing was like 60 something bucks i think it may not even been 25 dollars for a rebuild kit so um i could have bought basically no it was 90 i think it was 90 dollars for everything so basically i could have bought one whole new one but instead i've got two brand new ones basically essentially um sitting here resealed and everything ready to go um to go back on the sprayer for what it would have cost me just to buy one of these um and that's why you would rebuild them now <clears throat> for all my uh tech friends out there you can buy just the valve if you're wondering about doing this to your sprayer you can buy this valve setup and just the valve setup you don't have to buy their control box um you can it let me put it this way what i found was when i was doing this i was going to build my own box to control this this sprayer and instead i went ahead and bought one because when i priced everything it to build the box from the materials i was going to need to do it on my own um with a master switch three cutoff switches and an adjuster switch for the pressure regulator and the gauge i could just buy the whole the control valve box um, they're not hard to build um i mean you got power and ground on three switches um you've got a master switch that kills the power at all three of those um that's pretty well it i mean just a master circuit and then you have a power and ground for the uh the regulator because it's just a butterfly valve with a little motor um and a bump switch that's it um and then the gauge is just a regular gauge hooked to a hose i mean it's not like it's not this fancy thing that you think super complicated when you get into it because i just had to replace the gauge in the box um i didn't film that uh, the other day um i did have three seasons of use on these uh, covering a lot of ground a lot of on and off and a lot of people probably wonder what's the purpose in that it seems like a fancy feature it's better to have these than cut your pto on and off because that's a lot of wear and tear on your tractor um and to me this setup with the control box and everything stinks four hundred dollars now probably five i think i paid like three something when i did it three years ago um and to me it's worth more honestly or as well i shouldn't say more it's worth as much to me as the gps is because you don't realize how much you waste turning around on the ends until you start shutting it off and start realizing how much you're wasting just turning around on the ends when you're going back and forth um now if you have a gps and you're going following your lines and you start getting to the narrow points in the field and turning around and everything several times and you're going back and forth this thing these are valuable or or uh, invaluable um you save so much uh herbicide and chemical with these versus not having them that it's almost crazy not to have them um i forgot to put the washer in dang it i gotta take it back apart but anyway y'all get the idea how to do it um i ain't no professional just don't claim to be but that's basically a crash course from an idiot <laughs> on how to rebuild these things so thanks for watching please comment rate and subscribe and i like to them pretty simple see y'all next time